Um, what are your, so we, 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 we talked a lot about cardiovascular disease and some all-cause mortality. We didn't talk about all the studies. I mean, there was the, oh, no. there was there's too many. Yeah. There's I mean, too many. The, the vital study. Well, mm -hmm. I do want to get your thoughts on, you know, the, the, the strength study and, and why this was the, would they use Lavaza? What, you know, what did no, they use? No, they used a thing called Epinova. Epinova. Epinova which is a EPA plus DHA. Same ratio as in Lavaza, except they're free fatty acids, not ethyl esters. So they're unesterified mm. EPA and DHA, which, which they had previously shown are more readily absorbed. You don't have to hydrolyze them. They're already free fatty acids. Uh, but the trouble with those is they're also pretty in, uh, irritants. They're GI irritants, free fatty acids are. So they had to, they had to um, enterically coat the pills. Um, so, at the end, so that's fine. Um, why did strength, which was a bigger study than reduce it, but in virtually the same kind of patient, high cardiovascular risk, high triglycerides, on statins, that's, everybody had to be in there, 13,000 people worldwide. And uh, placebo was corn, or was uh, olive oil, I believe, stripped olive oil. Um, they found no effect at all. Uh, and stopped the study early, as a matter of fact, uh, for futility. And it was the biggest shock to everybody in the omega-3 world that it didn't work. And nobody really has a good understanding of why. And, and you know, people come up with ideas, you know, like they were healthier. Well, I mean, it was done like two years after Reduce It was done. I mean, and probably recruiting out of the, exactly the same sites as well around the world. Multiple countries are involved. Um, I, I don't think that makes any sense. Uh, if, to me, if, if I had to guess that there may be some chronic, I mean, your GI tract is not designed to be taking in four grams of free fatty acids every day. Mm. It's just not designed for that. And you, there may be some, that may induce some kind of chronic inflammatory response that's going on systemically from taking these detergents. Right. <laughs> um, it, particularly if they don't, uh, and they've only been studied like for 12 weeks in other studies, and they show the nice absorption, lower triglycerides. They do very well to do that, but for four or five years of taking this every day, I, I bet there was just some kind of chronic uh, inflammatory thing going on that erased any omega-3 benefit. And they didn't measure any inflammatory They measured CRP, even they didn't see any difference. CRP's not very sensitive. Yeah, I mean, that, that's all. They measured so that's the only metric they have so uh, nobody knows i don't know yeah i don't know put so that you, way so they cut this off the, cert, the study um the study early and you said they were you know the participants were of the same sort of health status mm -hmm. as the participants reduce, in the reduce it. it trial but if you look at the adverse or the fatalities there were much fewer is that because right. they stopped it early or is that why i mean no no i mean yeah i've got a, an interesting slide showing the the, the, the event rate in reduce it in the placebo group, which is like this, and the event rate in the treated group, which is lower, 25% lower. And then you look at the event rate in strength, and both placebo and active were even lower than the event rates in the treated group in reduce it. So there's something, something, there were fewer events, yeah. a lot fewer events. And maybe you're, Nobody knows how to explain that either. Mm -hmm. And you really, I mean, theoretically, you can't put these curves on the same graph. It's not the same study. But it was very close to the same study, in my view. Well, the other thing is that the EPA versus the one that had EPA and DHA. And what are your thoughts? Like, I, you know, I hear people, I mean, you see headlines that say, oh, DHA can negate some of the, the positive effects of EPA. And I, don't, I don't believe that. I mean, I... <clears throat> I think there's an effort by those who want to promote the EPA-only product to vilify DHA mm. in any way they can, um, which I don't think is appropriate. And I don't think we have the evidence for it. Just because this study didn't work doesn't mean DHA counteracted the effect of EPA. You can't draw it. You need to do an, a study with DHA. That's what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, pure DHA versus pure EPA versus maybe a combination would be optimal versus a placebo. So a forearm group like Vital, you know, Vital had 225,000 people, forearms. 
in vitamin D. I'd love to see a vital with four arms of, of EPA alone, DHA alone, the combination, and a placebo, and see what would happen. And measuring the omega-3 index. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a good trial. I think with the vital study, you know, it made headlines because the, well. It didn't work. Well, the primary <laughs> outcome didn't work, but. Primary outcome didn't did work. Did it not work in your opinion? No, it did work in my opinion. It's just the, the primary outcome was with a composite of multiple different kinds of outcomes. And if you look at the individual elements, there was benefit. There was reduced major reduction in risk of heart attack. And even in, in people who didn't, who ate little fish or half, the lower half of the fish intake, they got a significant reduction in the primary endpoint. Right. Uh, so there was, there was good outcomes in that study from, from taking 840 milligrams. So it's a one capsule of Levesa. And that's not much. It's not. It's not much. So I think it was a positive study at the end yeah. of the day. And, and that study itself kind of proves, it, because it was Levesa, which is the EPA DHA <clears throat> combo, that DHA can't be negating any well, because you would, I, I suppose the other side I mean, can say, well, it's, yeah, it would have been much better if it was just EPA, right? Okay. It's the four grams of uh, what was Im important with reduce it, it's four grams a day, which is really five times higher than anybody's ever used before for omega-3 dosing. Uh, and that, that showed a benefit. And I, th I think everybody said, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, we got a high dose finally. Now we see some real serious benefits of omega-3. Uh, I just wish that strength had turned out <laughs> with the same dose, four grams a day of EPA plus DHA. Uh, I wish it had turned out, but it didn't. So, you know, you take a big risk in these trials. Right. Um, and you kind of just mentioned what your your ideal trial would be with the DHA, the EPA, yeah, right. the, the combination of the, I'd love the to two. See that. And um, who's going to fund that? I don't know. Well, any other are there any other clinical trial designs that if people are listening, scientists or um, well, I mean, the, the the fundamental thing to do is something you mentioned earlier is to, is to measure omega three levels at, at baseline and only allow people in who've got a below normal, pick some number exclude people with already high omega-3 because it's not going to, potentially not going to help. It's like recruiting people into a statin trial when their cholesterol's, you know, 100. It's silly. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there's no, nowhere to go. Um, so I think that would be, that's one of the main things to do. And then, of course, to follow it up with an analysis based on blood levels achieved instead of just by group assignment.